Just four years before, another great fighter retired, a man who many claim to be the greatest in the history of the ring. He was lightweight champion Benny Leonard. Leonard could do everything well. He was fast, he could box, and he had a knockout punch. But early in his career, he had troubles that were far more difficult than opposing fighters. The troubles? Mom and Pop. I was 15 years old, went down to, and boxed four rounds, hit and ran, and received five dollars and a black eye. And I went home that night, and my mother saw me as I came in through the door, and she cried, sent for my dad. And my dad came in, and he said, fighting again for what? And I reached into my pocket, brought out the five dollar bill, put it in his hand, he showed it to my mother. My mother cried. She didn't care about the money, didn't want to see a boy get hurt. My dad put the five dollar bill in his pocket, pat me on the shoulder, said, Benny, my boy, it's all right. When are you going to fight again? Leonard became lightweight champion in May 1917 and retired undefeated in 1925. He made a comeback in 1931 and retired again the following year. He had many difficult fights, but none was as difficult as the one with Richie Mitchell in 1917. Something hit me on the chin. I never felt any more than that pencil you've got in your hand. Tapped me on the chin, my legs went up like a trick doll, and down I went. Boy, that's a terrible feeling. You know, it's like a man drowning, all the thoughts that flash across your mind in nine seconds. I saw my title floating away. I thought of my mother and all my friends who had bet on me. I looked up at Mitchell, he looked twice the size. Of course, I got up at nine. If they'd allowed me to, I'd have taken 49. I could have used it. Of course, I lost that little spring in my legs, and I kept stalling and talking to Mitch a little bit, urging him to come on, which scared him a little bit and kept him away, which I was glad of. And finally, after two or three more rounds, I got that strength back into my body again, and I went to work on Mitchell, and I knocked him out in the fifth round. On April 18, 1947, Leonard was refereeing a bout at New York St. Nicholas Arena. It was a warm night, and Leonard had to work the whole card. With the main bout just over, Bill Corum was still broadcasting to a coast-to-coast -coast radio audience. It was the most tragic and dramatic sports broadcast in history. I looked up, and Leonard had slumped down with his back to me right along the ropes. I thought at first it was a slip and was just about to say, get up, Benny, and get a draw, when suddenly it occurred to me that it was more than a slip. In a sort of reflex motion, he rolled his head, and then his face was completely gray, and there was just a little saliva trickling down the side of his mouth. I feared that something terrible had happened before Dr. Nardiello got into the ring. He listened uh, for the heartbeat and tried to find uh, Leonard's pulse, and had opened his medical kit and was obviously ready to give him a shot when he shook his head and uh, put his instruments back in the kit and signaled for the stretcher bearers. I said before we went off the air, I feared the, that this uh, was the worst. The death of Leonard was a shock to the whole boxing world, but it was an even greater shock to Ray Arcel, one of the great fight trainers of all time. I was in London, England in April of 1947. I had been over there with Joe Baxey, who had just beaten uh, Bruce Woodcock and uh, in beating Bruce Woodcock he had sent Woodcock to the hospital with a broken jaw and the following day the newspaper boys were yelling extra on the street and hollering the great champion dies and uh, for a moment I was scared to death I thought that Woodcock had died and then I rushed out and bought a newspaper and saw that it was my old friend Benny Leonard. 